Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. We are back working on the Teprom Temple today, and I'm going to try some high-tech solutions to my casting problems. On the temple reference photos, underneath these main heads here, there's a ring of women kneeling in a prayer position, and the, the position varies. Each one is slightly different. And there's a ring underneath these main heads, and I want to add that detail to my temple model. I'll show you a photo of the temple, and you can see the detailing underneath the heads here. These Cambodian temples have thousands of carved figures of women in them, and some people call them sprites or fairies, or dancers, um, but each one is different and all hand carved and they're just amazing. So yeah, it'll be an important detail to add. So I'm going to try and model that up today. And then Scott Winard from Let's Do Bonsai in the UK, he's sending me a flexible molding kit. And so I'll try and sculpt the figures out of the air hardening clay or DAS modeling clay. I'm going to go to Michael's today and get some of that. I'll, I'll carve out that ring with all the figures on it, and then I'll try and do a flexible mold of it, and then I'll cast it in cement. So <laughs> quite a challenge. I don't know if I'll get it all done today, but I'm going to try and get as far as I can. So that's my task. So I'm off to Michael's now. I'm going to buy the air, harden, air hardening clay, and uh, I think you get one kilogram for about just under $20. I'm off to the store now and I'll buy the air hardening clay and we'll start the sculpting. I'm back from my shopping trip and I did get my DAS clay, D-A-S. It's an air drying clay. So you get one kilogram. And I got some tools. I got uh, tools for doing the sculpting with. Um, there's a 15 pack of tools here all kinds of hooks and carving things and pokers and drills and little spatula type things. So that, that should be really useful for doing the carving. From my plant room, I noticed that there was water dripping down the icicles from the roof outside. So I brought my bucket to catch the rainwater and put it underneath. And on my way back, I noticed there was a package on the front doorstep. All right, here's the package. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Well, I'm not very good at opening packages, am I? <laughs> Maybe I gotta cut it down the middle. I don't know. I'll try putting it this way. Oh my goodness. All right, let's see. I am opening it up and it is. It's a note, a gift note from Scott Winard. It says, hi, Nigel. You might want to try and make a mold of the temple. So here's a kit that should work for you. Let me know how it goes if you use it from Scott Winard. So awesome. Thanks, Scott. This is wonderful. So it is a Omo Umu Umu Tin Cure Silicon Rubber. You mix in a ratio of 1A, 1B by volume. Pourable silicon rubber. Liquid rubber for pouring over original models, sculpted pieces, and more. Mold rubber reproduces perfect detail, ideal for home art or industrial projects. That is going to be cool. So inside I can see there's two bottles. You mix them up, stir them up, pour, let it harden or get rubbery, and then you peel it away. Then I can pat, cast my concrete in there. That is really cool. That is gonna be awesome. Thanks, Scott, that's gonna be great. Okay, so I have to have something to make my mold of, so I've got to get sculpting. So I got my DAS clay and my tools. I'm going to put plastic down on the table here so the clay doesn't get dirty. I've got a lot of cement dust on here. That should make it a nice, keep the clay clean and grit free. So I'll do that. I'll just put the plastic bag kind of over everything. 
There, I've got a nice clean surface to work on. So I can open up my clay now. So here I go. Whoops. Uh, I don't think you can reseal these bags. Doesn't look like it. So I'll just open the end here. Like that. This clay is made in Italy, which is really cool. Okay. So there's what it looks like. It's kind of like, almost like putty. You can squeeze it, mold it, sculpt it. Looks really good. And it air dries. It takes, I looked it up, it said it takes 24 hours per every centimeter of thickness. So a centimeter would be about that kind of thickness. So it take 24 hours to air dry that layer. So depending how thick your model is, it could take longer to fully harden on the inside. So very cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sculpt the the female figures first. I'm going to try doing it separately, like one at a time. And, you know, maybe I can just sculpt two or three of them and then alternate them so it looks like they're all different. But uh, I'll try it out. I'll have to get kind of a size, what size I want them, and then start sculpting and see how well I do. I'm going to check my reference photos and just see how high these female figures will be. I checked my reference photos and the height of the people kneeling or sitting is from the eyebrow of the face down to the chin. So that makes it about five centimeters high, which is that high. So it's not very big. I'll have to do some real miniature work, I guess. All right, so let's get out some clay and start going here. I'll need enough to make a figure about this high, so I'll grab a, a wad of clay. That is probably plenty. So I'll seal the bag up the best I can, like that, and I'll start the modeling. Wow, this is going to be interesting. I guess I should open my tools up and see what I have in there. All right, let's do that. So here's my toolkit. And it comes in a, I think it's a zip up, yeah, a zip up pouch so I can cut the plastic away. The over packaging. Okay, let's see if I can slide that out. There we go. That's just packaging. So let's open up and see what we got here. Oh, look at this. This is kind of cool. <laughs> That's a lot of tools in there. So there's all kinds of cool tools. There's little hooks. There's a drill. There's pokers. There's triangle shaped pointy things. There's like little spatulas. Hooks. And then there's a lot of basic wooden carving tools. Pretty well everything I think I need. All right. Now, what do I use? That's a good question. I've uh, never really done much uh, clay modeling with tools before. I think I'm going to start. There's a basic. Put that away. There's a basic cutting tool. It's just a little wire in a triangle and you can slice away parts with it. So I think I'll start with that. It's a kind of a basic tool. So the person's the person's going to be kneeling or sitting cross-legged. So I'm going to start just trying to roughly mold in a person here. Something recognizable as a human. And that, that may be hard. Now, I don't know on this clay if you're supposed to use water with it to kind of smooth out sections. I don't know. I guess I should look it up. Maybe it says on the instructions. Let's look there. Wow, they're really small. 
uh, for professional hobby use, uh, no baking needed. Air drying, 24 to 48 hours. Uh, model using wet hands or while wearing hand lotion. Does not stain for modeling figures, souvenirs, flowers, sculptures, etc. For large pieces, use wire, sticks, or aluminum foil for the internal structure. Wet pieces can be joined together with cold glue. Yeah, so I guess I guess water will smooth it out because it says to use it with wet hands. Okay, so is that starting to look like a human? <laughs> No, it's not. I know. Okay, let's get some legs going here. <laughs> this is going to look good. Trust me. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like much yet, <laughs> but it will look like a human. <laughs> it's an alien. I am from Mars. Take me to your leader. We built these, we built these temples for you humans. <laughs> wow, is that ever looking good now? <laughs> so, um, I've got to get kind of the basic proportions here. Um, these legs are way too short. So i got to make longer legs, longer arms, a bit of a neck. Neck like that. This clay has a smell to it. It smells like uh, beer or, or liquor. Yeah, like if you go by a, a brewery, it's got that smell to it. Like a distillery. That's what I'm trying to think of. It smells like a distillery. Now that person is getting kind of big, but if they're seated, seated, yeah, I think I'm pretty close with the size of the person. This is going to be a female, so we've got to have some female proportions here. Now, I'm going to have the legs. There's several positions of the legs. There's cross-legged, and then there's ones kneeling with the legs behind them. And I think on the temple reference photos, you can't really see the legs, so I think they're kneeling with the legs behind them. I don't think they're the cross-legged, so... Uh, that's how I'm going to mold my first one. So it'll be like this. Kind of kneeling. With the feet behind. And you won't see that because the feet will be in with the temple. Now I think that's how it is from what I can tell. And again, it's really hard to tell on any of these. Okay. And the hands, they were in like a praying position. At least on some of them. They're all different, but... I'm going to try that kind of. So sort of like that kind of a thing. And I can feel this clay is getting dry already. So I think I'll have to spritz it with a bit of water. Or at least wet my hands. Oh yeah, that softens it up again. I can feel the clay that dried on my hands softening up. Okay, so. Um, so that doesn't look much but I think I think it's got the height correct maybe it's a little big but by the time I sculpt it away I think it'll be okay so I'm going to I'm gonna put some clay behind to hold it vertical while I'm sculpting it because this will be cut away because it'll go against the wall of the temple or the the back of the temple so um, I'm gonna get a little more clay out like that and I'll put it behind and build it up. And this will be sort of my base. So I can sculpt it in the vertical position. And then I'll cut the way, cut away the base when I'm happy with the piece. Okay, so I think I need another tool to kind of... Let's see my seams here. A tool to kind of blend it in. I'm going to use my wooden stick for that. And I'll just wet the end of it probably bamboo or something and then then I can kind of I can kind of you know blend the clay in to 
to kind of get rid of my seams to make it a little stronger. And I'll start laying out the head, the face, I mean, not the head. Um, so the eyes are about halfway in the head. The nose is about halfway again. And the mouth is about halfway again. There's kind of the proportions of the face. Now, I'm going to use my wire sculptor here a bit. Clay is a wonderful material to work with. I know if I ever got into bonsai pottery, I'd be hooked. I'd, I'd be making all my own pots. I'd probably buy a kiln. That's the reason I stay away because I'm trying to concentrate on growing the trees. You can, you've either, I don't know, you can have both hobbies, I guess, but my trees keep me pretty busy and to do more when there's, you know, really good potters out there, people who are experienced, you know, if I started, I'd have to start from scratch and learn. Okay, so here's where I'm at so far. Now I might have to have the hands kind of molded to the body so they're not sticking out, kind of pressed against like this. That way it won't be so delicate. So I'm, I'm going to work away on the sculpture for a while. Um, and then I'll come back every 10, 15 minutes, show you the progress. And hopefully it will make progress. So yeah, we'll keep checking in every now and then. It's been about 10 minutes. So here's a look at my piece so far. It's slowly getting there. I keep a little tub of water beside it and you can kind of dip your tools in it and it makes it a lot easier for sculpting. It smoothens everything out. And your cutting tools, you know, you dip them in water and they cut through the clay a lot nicer. The clay kind of hardens as you work on it, which is good because it kind of solidifies and then you put a bit of water on it and it softens it up again. So yeah, it's quite a nice media to work with. So I'll keep working away at it, refining it. I'm making a little more progress. You can see I've got the kneeling position, the hands kind of up there, everything's sort of roughed in and now I got to refine it all. Here's an update to the sculpture. I'm uh, doing a lot of fine tuning and sculpting, getting the proportions better, slimming down the arms and things like that. Just getting it looking better. So I'll keep working away at it. My wife came by and she said, that looks like fun. And it is fun. It's really fun doing this sculpting. I enjoy it. Well, it's been about half an hour. I'm starting to get more of the details in place. Kind of the legs folded under. Yeah, starting to look more detailed, more lifelike. So I'll keep working away. Here's a look at the sculpture now after another half an hour or so. So it's coming along. Kind of got it model kind of 360 degrees now. Well, there is my sculpture. I'm going to call it finished. It's starting to harden as I'm working away at it. So there's kind of what it looks like from all views. It's the back, side view. So it's still a little flexible, but it's starting to harden. I've been collecting water in my bucket today. Let's go see how full it is. I've already gotten one full bucket today, so I'm hoping this one's kind of full. Uh, not really. <laughs> it's maybe a quarter full. That's better than nothing. So I've got a bucket and a quarter today. That's pretty good. The level in my barrel is going up. I got a lot of water yesterday. So yeah, I'm set for water for probably three weeks now, which is pretty good. I'll head back inside now and we'll have one last look at the sculpture. 
And that'll be it. the little sculpture dries okay and without cracking in that and I don't know how easy it'll be to cast it in cement but uh, we'll find that out another day so yeah I think it looks pretty good it's about the right size too so that's all for today I'm Nigel Saunders thanks for joining me in the bonsai zone mm -hmm.